Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a very interesting concept that I've had in regards to Gran Turismo 7. There are a lot of interesting pieces of news that have dropped in the last couple of last week or so and it's really started to make me view Gran Turismo 7 slightly differently. And again, here's my outlandish statement. Is Gran Turismo 7 approaching end of life? Now, a lot of people are saying, why in the hell are we talking about this? The fact that, you know, it's only been out two years. The next game hasn't already been announced. You know, what? Why? So I'm not going to say end of life like Gran Turismo Sport end of life where they're going to pull off the servers or anything, but more or less the idea that Gran Turismo 7 is finished. You know, what more does... Polyphony Digital need to add to this game to really take it to the next level. And I think at this point, it's there really isn't a point to keep updating this anymore. So, point number one for this idea that we're approaching the end of the development cycle for Gran Turismo 7 is that normally Kazunori Yamauchi releases silhouettes of the new cars for the new update every month and on the last Thursday of every month we finally get to see those cars and normally it includes some engine up swaps some new events uh, maybe a couple of quality of life updates same thing like that just you know, pretty typical for June we have nothing and it finally was this last Thursday of June where the update should have been dropped where we receive an announcement stating that any new information regarding the next update, update 1.49, will be dropped during the Montreal World Final Race, which has led a lot of people to speculate that since last September, we've been rumored to eventually be getting the Gilles Villeneuve circle, circuit in Montreal. And at this point, I'm going to simply state we should probably lessen our expectations ever so slightly. Because the other piece of news that was revealed was that there is a Genesis X VGT car in development of some flavor. And I think that's kind of the big piece of news that we're going to get is, you know, Gran Turismo announcing some new cars with some of these new partnerships that they've had. I want to say I'm trying to remember, there's another, I think it was Hyundai, where they announced like a partnership with the N Division or something like that. So maybe a couple of new cars regarding that as well. But moreover, the idea that we're going to get a brand new track at this point is it's very evident that Polyphony Digital are working on something. And considering that during Sony's state of play, we didn't see anything regarding the Gran Turismo 7 PC port, I think it is almost for sure at this point that that is not happening. I think if there is anything happening on the PC side, it's that when Gran Turismo 8 eventually is dropped, there will be a PC release that will happen on the same day. That's my thought process. I think as far as the PC version of Gran Turismo 7, I think that's pretty much said and done at this point. There is some testing, which is what we saw with the NVIDIA leak. Jensen's prophecy, if you will. But I think as far as what they what they learned from the testing of the Gran Turismo 7 version for PC, again, like I said, it was just like a beta demo or whatever. They were just using it to test how this game will eventually run for PC and take that knowledge, that information, and apply it towards Gran Turismo 8. So long story short, where I'm going with all this is that considering that there wasn't anything for June and then they had made mention that you know stay tuned for the 1.49 update for July then that means that we're only going instead of getting an update for June and July we're only going to get one for July so it's very evident that the more or less our case is that the development of future updates is already slowing down by the looks of it point number two is that a very prominent Gran Turismo Twitter account that shares a lot of news regarding Gran Turismo and whatnot had shared actually on the same day of what would have been the June update, so that was on Thursday, shared an article to GameBiz, which is a Japanese website, 
and I'm reading through through Google Translate, so sorry if this is a little bit odd. It says, Polyphony Digital, a subsidiary of Sony Interactive Entertainment, reported a decline in net profit of 18.8% from the fiscal year ending in March 24. This is down from the fiscal year ending in March 2023, where it was reported that they had earned 408 million yen versus this last fiscal year where they earned a net profit of only 331 million yen. If you take a look at the numbers, you think 18.8% is quite a huge drop. And in some cases it is. If you're one of those finance bros who are constantly looking for constantly growing big number, you look at that and you get scared. But might I remind you that the fiscal year ending in March 2023, that 408 million yen net profit year, included the release of Gran Turismo 7. That was March 22 to March 23. So for this last year, year two of Gran Turismo 7 being out, they had reported 331 million yen, an 18.8% drop from the year before. That's not bad. Considering all they've done is release a game, and then this last year they've released a rather big update that included a couple of new tracks, and all throughout this time they've released you know new cars and whatnot. That's really good because they're not sitting here with like millions and millions and millions of options of microtransactions. Yes, they are there, but they're not locking DLC behind a paywall. They're not locking content for the game behind a paywall you know they could be so much more nefarious and so much more greedy when it comes to these different monetization practices so for them to only really release one game I should admit that some of that year before you know the fiscal year ending in 2023 probably included some sales for Gran Turismo Sport. I know I had paid for it pretty late at that point. But like I said, all in all, I think that's not too bad. So with what I said there, this whole idea that the net profit has dropped. Again, this is profit. This isn't revenue. This isn't them saying that they're now in the hole by any means. This is just their profit, the number that they have extra left over is slightly less than it was the year before. They're in a pretty good spot. So that being said, it kind of ruins this idea that Gran Turismo 7 is in end of life by any means. And I know that that will, this video is more or less meant to be a conversation piece of like, okay, how long do we think Gran Turismo 7 will be supported? Because with the updates slowing down, with the lack of information that is really come out about the game for this last couple of years. The last big news that we had was just the Spec 2 update. And yeah, we've got the World Finals now. But I mean, what else is there? For, for us who are playing this game on a daily basis, I know that the number of us who will continue to play this game on a daily basis as the years go on will start dropping off as we'll get a set of courts at Evo, as we're going to get uh test drive unlimited solar crown as we're going to get all sorts of these other huge momentous racing games coming out it will just draw our attention away and now with need for speed unbound having these quarterly updates that are really changing the here's the big thing unbound is announcing new game modes and lots of new cars and all this kind of stuff and with Gran Turismo 7 these monthly updates are just here's a couple new cars have fun no new game modes, no new nothing. We don't even have like drift events, we don't have drag events here, we don't have even drag strips or drag tracks. You know, there's so much more that Polyphony could be doing with this game if they really wanted to extend this lifespan out. But it's very evident that due to the lack of information that they've had come out really at all since Spec 2, gives me the feeling that this game is in the next few months, we'll see these monthly updates go from monthly to bi-monthly to quarterly, maybe? 
And I think it will slow down until we get the inevitable Gran Turismo 8 trailer. And yeah, we'll uh, see kind of what happens from there. So long story short, do I think that Gran Turismo 7 is in quote-unquote end of life? No. <laughs> yes, I do apologize for the clickbaity title or whatever. But I just want to get this... I would just want to start a conversation of what other people are feeling at this point. If, if they've already moved on from Gran Turismo 7, or if there's really anything that's keeping them from moving on at this point, or if they're going back to other previous Gran Turismo games to re revisit to have a different experience because they're just kind of tired of Gran Turismo 7. Like I said, it's very interesting to see from the beginning when a company releases a game and watch them over a monthly basis see how they progress over the lifespan of a game and I find that this next point of time is probably going to be one of the most crucial pieces of time for Polyphony Digital's history is how they handle going from a fairly successful game in my mind to whatever they bring next and this game has been very successful because they were smart about making this game cross-gen I know a lot of people were very upset about that decision but I think that decision to make it cross-gen was imperative for Gran Turismo 7's success because I played it on PlayStation 4 and then I got the digital upgrade to PlayStation 5 and then I bought the PlayStation 5 disc because I wanted it and I was able to enjoy it on PlayStation 4 until I was able to get a PlayStation 5 which I think was the experience that a lot of consumers had so I think Polyphony had really hit the hit the ball out of the park with that decision. And they've done a great job supporting this game up, up until now. So I'd like to see what they do next when they announce Gran Turismo 8 for being only for PlayStation 5. Will it be for PlayStation 6 too? Are, are the AAA development cycles taking that long where they're just going to announce it for 5 with a tie-in to, tie to PlayStation 6? Who knows? So like I said, let me know down in the comment section down below what you guys are feeling at this point. If this is too early to have these discussions, if you think I'm absolutely crazy, or if you're thinking that there is some validity to this as we're seeing some more sparse and less frequent information coming out for Gran Turismo 7, if we're all getting this feeling that maybe it's, maybe it's time to move on, you know? But again, let me know what your comments thoughts, opinions, questions, comments, concerns down in the comment section down below. If you again enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.